Hello Summoners, and welcome to another Pro Guides video. Today, we'll be talking about the best champs to main on patch 13.9. In this series, we have a list of three champs per role, compiled by our elite team of challenger players and analysts, that are strong and not too contested. This makes them great to pick up, since you're likely to get your hands on them, and they're not very likely to be nerfed anytime soon. Of course, if you like the work you see from our team here, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. You can see what we have to offer for free, and if you're serious about leveling up your game, you can become a pro member for just $7.99 a month. Stick around till the end of the video for more on that, or if you want to check now, click that link down in the description box. Alright, let's get on with the video. We'll start things out in the top lane with Poppy. A lot of players seem hesitant to pick tanks since they are perceived as being more about team play and less about carrying games. It may be true for some picks like Ornn and Malphite, but Poppy is not like them. She has a very scrappy playstyle, playing way more like a bruiser. Honestly, I'd say she'd be most accurately classified as a juggernaut. You don't even usually go a tank mythic on Poppy, you'll almost always go Divine Sunderer. That item, along with her Q's percent of HP based damage, make her a very strong duelist against all types of opponents. She can even go head to head with S tier duelists like Camille and Fiora when played well. She does lack the AoE CC that a lot of tanks bring to fights, but you can still use her W, E, and R to make the game completely unplayable for one foe in particular. Her W is especially good at shutting down champs that rely on spamming dashes in fights like Riven or Callista. The next top laner we have is Kled. Kled is one of the more unique champs in League, bringing a ton to the table. He's a bruiser that does tons of damage, but with his massive health pool and remount mechanic, he can easily frontline like any tank. He's a strong lane bully, with tons of solo kill potential, especially when you run Ignite, which you should in most cases. Once ahead, he easily snowballs out of control, able to steamroll down a side lane, even 1v2 with ease if someone comes to help out your opponent once it's too late. But he's not just glued to the side lane. His ult gives you a way to start up teamfights. Being able to quickly bounce at the enemy team and find a target would be strong on its own, but it also has the utility of speeding up your entire team for a quick follow-up. The last top laner we have for today is Camille. She definitely has one of the highest mastery curves out of the top laners. You may struggle a bit to get consistent results with her at first, since she requires a lot of precise execution to trade well, but once you're well-practiced, she's incredibly strong. Her kit is flexible, allowing you to adapt to any matchup. She can trade quick and bursty, go for more extended fights, or against opponents you can't really safely melee at all, you can even do W max and play to whittle them down with that. Her gank setup post 6 is also really good, so be sure to call for your jungler once you have ult for free kills. You typically want to play the early game semi lax. Camille's 1v1 potential starts to ramp up hard once you hit Divine Sunderer, so it's usually best to wait till you have that to start forcing fights. Once you hit two items, you can definitely take over the game with her massive split push threat. One quick pro tip, while she is a really popular TP Ignite champ, you should really play her with Flash TP. It's much safer, and Flash opens you up to catching out carries more easily later on. Now, for the jungle, our first pick is Rengar. This is another really high mastery curve champ. When most people die to a Rengar, they probably think he's a skillless champ since they feel like they're just being one shot in the blink of an eye, but he's a lot harder than he looks. Once you play him, you'll understand. You have to path really well with him, and only take smart bites. He gets out 1v1 by a lot of other meta junglers early on, and if you fall behind, he's entirely useless. And while he does one shot by spamming everything later in the game, that's only when super fed. Before that point, you'll notice really good Rengars usually don't just sit on an opponent autoing them to death. They usually kite in and out of fights using bushes to stall and wait out their cooldowns. If you want something easier to pick up that still carries games really hard, you should consider Fiddlesticks. There's no real mechanical skill here at all. You really just need a good grasp of pathing to play him well. Seriously, that's it. Pre-6, you just spam clear camps and only go for ganks on super overextended foes. Post-6, you ult on cooldown and clear while waiting for it to come back up. Since his ult has a long cooldown early, you want to make sure you're ganking lanes that you're guaranteed to get kills in to make each one count. Typically, that means immobile foes and allies that have CC to chain with yours or at least good damage to burst them down in your fear. Once you make it to mid game and onwards, every ult has the potential to completely wipe the enemy team. Don't rush into using it. Make sure you're using his passive to clear vision and wait for that one moment where the enemy team clumps up, usually as they're pushing a turret or when they funnel the setup near Dragon or Baron. You'll notice that in our build, we have Zonia's pretty late into it, and that's because it's not as mandatory as people make it sound. You don't need it second. It has some nice synergy with Fiddle, but if you're using his ult right, opponents should be feared and basically close to death by the time the fear runs off. That said, some certain champions will definitely make it a must buy, so get it at your discretion. Our third pick in the jungle is Zac. Much like I said about Poppy in the top lane, Zac is a tank that doesn't really feel like a tank. He does tons of damage. 
just think of him as a very beefy AP bruiser. You could even go Demonic Embrace after Sunfire if you want to do even more damage in extended fights. Another thing that sets Zack apart from other tanks in the jungle is his immense gank pressure. Champs like Amumu and Sichuani really feel bound by their ults, but Zack's ult is sort of just a bonus in ganks. Usually, just landing E is enough to get a kill, and with its massive range once you max it out, you're able to come flying in over walls from any direction. Now, let's talk about some mid laners, starting with Pantheon. He's a very powerful lane bully, winning virtually all matchups. His high damage and point and click CC isn't just good for trading one on one, it also makes playing with a jungler super easy, making ganks impossible to mess up. If your foe is respecting this too much, you don't just have to sit idly mid lane, shove and look to roam. You could help your jungler secure scuttles, look to invade the enemy jungle and tilt them off the rift, or two man gank a side lane. Panth is like a bruiser assassin hybrid. He's got the beefiness and dueling power of a bruiser, and can even tow the front line since his E allows you to negate all damage for a short bit. But he's also got insane burst, allowing you to one-shot squishies at any point past two items. You're able to teamfight when you have to, but definitely try to make picks as often as you can, especially before objective fights break out, since he's more suited to that than actual 5v5s. Somehow, after months of being absolutely busted, Annie is still incredibly strong and easy to play, yet somehow criminally underpicked. Her lane phase is really safe, with no opponents really being able to punish her. She isn't really able to force trades early like Panth, but she has the same great gank setup. Post 6, her solo kill pressure skyrockets, and once you get out of lane phase, you should always be looking to make picks. With that in mind, swapping to Oracle's lens is a must, so you can be sure you're lurking in areas with no vision to catch opponents off guard. You really want to be mindful of how you use your flash as Annie. If you blow it for a random pick without a big objective to take after, you're probably going to regret it. Typically, try to save it for team fights or when you know the kill will convert into turrets, dragon, or baron for your team. If you don't want to be the shining star on your team and would rather enable your allies instead, you need to try out Cillian. He has a pretty weak lane phase early on, since he only has his bombs to deal damage and even a double bomb doesn't do much damage to the wave. So just focus on last hitting and scaling. You won't be getting prio ever. Once you get more points in Q and some AP, things pick up, but still, even once you can clear the waves quickly, forcing fights usually isn't a good idea. You don't need to make a lead happen. You should be happy just to make it through the lane phase in one piece. Zillion spikes hard in the mid game, then becomes insane late. Just focus on who you need to play around on your team and what enemies you're trying to shut down and play around that. Moving things down to the bot lane, we have Tristana. With her ridiculously high burst, she's probably the easiest ADC to execute in a kill lane, with the ability to jump in and get kills as soon as you hit level 2. At level 6, the kill potential goes up even more since her ult just adds a lot more burst to the equation. Look to be aggressive pretty much all the time. Tristana can hit a power trough post lane phase if you don't keep the snowball rolling. So, as soon as you drop the turret in your lane, rotate around the map and force down the outers in other lanes, and then force fights anytime you can. Don't be afraid to go for assassinations with her too. When fed, you can jump onto M100-0 almost any other carry in the mid game. If you prefer a little bit more utility to fall back on if you don't get fed early, Ash is always a good champ to have in your bag. Even when she's not a top tier ADC, she's pretty much never bad either. She has strong laning, and her Hawkshot and ult will always be really OP tools even if you're behind. Hawkshot helps track the enemy jungler, allowing your jungler to path away or to them as needed. And her ult is simply one of the most OP in the game. It may not be very flashy, but being able to force engage his bot and later make picks for your team on such a low cooldown will just always fit into any team comp nicely. As per usual, we have a mage alternative for the bot carries that just don't like how team dependent most marksmen are. The APC we have for you this patch is Vagar. He's an infinitely scaling burst slash control mage that is also really strong early. Where's the balance in that? On top of doing insane damage, he's also really safe. Then again, so is every other scaling mage that can abuse Roa with Seraphs. You may as well be trying to burst down Amundo. Now, let's round things out with our support picks. The first one here is Tarek. Tarek is well known for being super underplayed but having a ridiculously high win rate on pretty much every patch every season. That's because he's a surprisingly flexible pick, able to adapt to any meta. He synergizes super well with aggro ADCs that can go in and serve as a conduit for his stun, specifically Tristana. Trust me, that duo is god tier, so if you can play it with a friend, do it. That said, he also pairs really well with hyper carries, since he can heal, shield, and peel for them. The most important advice I can give for you as Tarek is to keep auto attacking. It's so important that you keep autoing between spells so you can keep resetting their cooldowns. 
Even if the enemy champs get out of range and you have to hit a turret or minion in a fight, EEP autoing. Also, be sure you're putting two points in Q before maxing E, since you'll always get back two charges of your heal with your two passive empowered autos. The second support is Janna. People love to say how easy Janna is to play, and it's true that she does have a low skill floor, but there's also a lot you can do to be a great Janna instead of a mediocre one. Look to be a bit aggressive in lane. Use all that extra movement speed to roam and be a part of skirmishes elsewhere. And most importantly, don't be in the very back of fights. You should always be a wall between your carries and enemy divers, so you can actually use your Q and ult properly to prevent your opponents from killing your teammates. Oh, and one more thing. Full channel that ult. So many Janas just tap it to knock enemies back and then run away. The heal is insanely strong when you actually full cast it in fights, especially when you're getting your whole team in it. Finishing things off, we have Zareth. You can't really go wrong with maining a mage support. Plenty of people will say otherwise, but there's nothing wrong with it. Sure, you may not be a utility bot that absolutely caters to the ADC, but isn't bullying the lane and helping them get an early lead enough? The one caveat is that you do need to do well early to be useful later, so be sure to use wards, including buying control wards, and respect the enemy gank so you don't fall behind. And that about wraps things up for our three champs to main on patch 13.9. Like I was saying earlier, if you liked what you saw and heard here, do be sure to come on over to ProGuides.com. Our team of elite coaches will give you the absolute best one-on-one -on -one service you can ask for. With a ProGuides sub, you'll get discounted rates when booking with our coaches and get access to our masterclass courses produced by your favorite pros like CoreJJ, Doublelift, and General Sniper. Trust me, the amount of time and effort you save grinding your face against the wall of solo queue alone is definitely worth it. Again, you can find that link down in the description box. Anyways, thanks so much for watching the video. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one, but until then, good luck out there on the Rift. Bye-bye.